how I see it. Lip balm is the lotion for the lip and lip scrubs is like the body scrub for the lips. I think this is pretty obvious, but we can see the same connection with the ingredients used in these products as well. A lot of the anhydrous ingredients we use in our lotions can also be used in our body scrubs. And the same goes for lip scrubs. A lot of the ingredients we use in our lip balms can also be used in our lip scrubs. So if you've never made a lip scrub before, but have experience with lip balms, then that's a good place to start when choosing your ingredients. But if you don't have any experience with lip balms, that's totally cool too, I got you. Welcome back to my Formulating for Beginners series. I've covered a lot in the series so far, so if you're new, go back and watch the rest of the series. If you don't, there will be some things mentioned in this video that might not make sense. I also have a Patreon that costs $5 a month and there will be a blog post that goes right along with this video. That way you can actually download it and print it out. And I also post two exclusive videos on there every single month as well. The simplest way to make a lip scrub is by mixing together some sugar and some oil. It's nothing fancy, but it gets the job done and it's really cheap to make. The only issue is getting the ratio right. Here's a formula that I like, 80% sugar with 20% oil. You can use any oil you would like. I personally am using sunflower oil here, but castor oil is really popular. You probably have some olive oil in your cabinet. You can use that. You can use grapeseed oil. Any oil works fine. If you wanna add some flavor oils, subtract from the oil phase. So now your formula will look like this. 80% sugar, 19% oil, and 1% flavor oil. And since we're going to be using a plant oil, we should also add some vitamin E to keep the oil fresh longer. So subtract from the oil phase again, and here's how the new formula looks. 80% sugar, 18.5% oil, 1% flavor oil, and 0.5% vitamin E. If you're confused as to why we're writing these formulas in percents, then you need to go back and watch the rest of this Formulating for Beginner series. If you don't understand how I'm coming up with these percents either, then you need to go back and watch the rest of the series. There's something called suggested usage rate or recommended usage rates. And every ingredient has a suggested usage rate and these are provided to you by your ingredient supplier. So wherever you purchase your ingredients, make sure you're reading the description and somewhere on there you will find a suggested usage rate. I talk all about this in my Formulating for Beginner series so that's why it's really important to watch this whole series to understand exactly what's going on here. As for the sugar and oil percentages, I chose those through experimenting. I tried a bunch of different ratios between sugar and oil, and these were the percentages that were my favorite. So if you find that you don't like this formula, change out the percentages. It doesn't need to be this way. That's the beauty of formulating your own products. You can customize them. So even though we do get suggested usage rates for our ingredients from our suppliers, you do always need to experiment to see which percentages work best for you. So actually making this basic lip scrub is extremely simple. Just mix everything together. If you wanna add a coloring, you wanna add the coloring to the sugar first before adding the wet ingredients. And the coloring that I'm gonna be using is mica powder. So it is important to keep in mind that not all mica powders are lip safe. I purchased my mica powders from madmica.com. These are ethically sourced mica powders, and I definitely recommend using ethically sourced mica powders. And if you view each individual mica powder and you look over to the side, you will see what types of products are safe to use this mica powder in. As you can see here, this blue mica powder cannot be used in lip products. So instead, if you're wanting to make a blue lip scrub, you're gonna to have to use a lake. So as you can see here, this is a lake dye, and down here it says it's lip safe. And that's something extremely important to keep in mind when creating lip products. You wanna make sure these ingredients you're choosing are also lip safe. So back to the basic lip scrub formula. The downfall of this formula is that the oil does eventually settle to the bottom. And personally, this doesn't really bother me as there's still some oil throughout the product. So the lip scrub still feels extremely moisturizing, even if you're just dipping into the top of it. But I do know this is a concern for a lot of you, but don't worry, there are plenty of simple ways to fix this. In order to keep the oil from separating, we need some kind of binding agent. So this would be some kind of thickener 
that would add some viscosity to the product and keep all the ingredients together and uniform. These are things like waxes. I have sunflower, candelilla wax, carnauba wax, beeswax, and cerebellina. Beeswax and cerebellina are not vegan. You can also use things like fatty acid or fatty alcohols. Cetyl alcohol, satyral alcohol, stearic acid, behanol alcohol. You could also use things like butters, shea butter, mango butter, cocoa butter, cocum butter. There's so many different butters. So those are the simplest ingredients you could add. Now I would recommend a wax or a fatty acid or fatty alcohol over a butter since those types of ingredients have a much higher melting point as opposed to butters. So if your scrub has the possibility of getting too hot, there is a chance that the butter could melt and then everything would end up settling to the bottom. I also wanna mention that fatty acids and fatty alcohols, despite their name, they're actually really moisturizing ingredients. They aren't your typical acid or alcohol you may be thinking of. I go into more detail about these ingredients in other videos, but please keep in mind, these are natural ingredients, they're 100% safe, and they are most likely in a lot of products you're using right now. Here are two different basic formulas, one with a butter and one with a wax. Here's a semi-solid lip scrub formula using cocoa butter. So as you can see here, this is called the formula. I'm gonna transfer this into a recipe and my batch size is 50 grams. If you don't know how to transfer a formula in percents into a recipe in grams, go back, watch the rest of the series, you'll learn how to do it. So let's go ahead and make this lip scrub. So we're starting with the heated phase and I'm gonna add in the cocoa butter and then the sunflower oil. You can use any oil you would like. And then I'm just gonna take this watch glass. I'll link down below to the watch glass and these glass bowls I'm using because I get questions about these all the time. But I'm just using this to cover the bowl because it fits on it perfectly. And I filled up a pan with a little bit of water, put it on a uh, stove top, and then I just set the bowl in there and I'm going to let it melt. And while it melts, I'm weighing out the sugar. And then I'm gonna add in just a tiny bit of my purple mica powder my scale does even pick up the weight, it's such a small amount. And just mix it into the sugar. And then once the cocoa butter and oil mixture has melted, you want to mix it as it re-solidifies. For best results, I recommend putting it in the refrigerator or freezer and mixing it regularly as it cools down. As you can see here, it's 73 degrees Fahrenheit here. So this, you would think it would be solidified by now, but for some reason it doesn't, um, I don't know why, it just takes a while for the cocoa butter to re-solidify. But I went ahead and added in the rest of the cool down ingredients, the vitamin E and the flavor oil, mix that in. And normally I would recommend to just go ahead and add the sugar in now as it's still wet. But I wanna show you guys exactly like how much it hardens up. So I placed it in the freezer and here is how it looks. It hardens up a lot. But remember you'll get different results depending on what kind of butter you use. This cocoa butter I'm using specifically is really hard, but I've used other cocoa butters that aren't quite as hard. This one specifically is unrefined cocoa butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the sugar just a little bit at a time and mix it in. Again, it would be a lot easier to mix this in while it was still liquidy, but whatever. <laughs> and here's how it looks in the end. This is a pretty thick scrub, but it's not too hard. And also remember it will change viscosity depending on the temperature since it is made with a butter. So the next lip scrub is a semi-solid lip scrub with waxes. Again, here's the formula. And I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this formula into a recipe for a 50 gram batch. Here's what it looks like. And let's go ahead and make it. All right, starting with the heated phase again, I'm gonna add in the sunflower wax and then my sunflower oil. Again, you can use whatever oil you want. Just covering up the bowl, placing it in my water bath to let it melt. And while that's melting, I'm weighing out my sugar, adding in my lake blue dye and mixing that in. You always wanna follow suggested usage rates of your mica powders and any other coloring 
but since I'm making such a small amount, my scale doesn't even pick up the amount I'm adding in. So I'm just adding in like literally like a pinch. So once that's mixed in and once the heated phase has cooled down and re-solidified, um, as you can see here, this one's a lot softer since there's only about 5% wax in it. And you know, luckily with this formulation, it won't change depending on the temperature. Um, as of now, it's 119 degrees still, and you can still see how hard it is. But let it cool down to 100 degrees or lower before adding in your vitamin E and your flavor oil. Go ahead and mix those in, add in your sugar, mix that all up, and there you go. Add it into your jar, and there's your semi-solid lip scrub using wax. There are loads of other ingredients you could use in lip scrubs. You wanna look for ingredients that are oil soluble, lip safe, and moisturizing. Here's a list of some ingredients you can use. Note, these are just ingredients that I know of or that I have. There are loads of other lip safe ingredients you could use in lip scrubs, so keep that in mind. Oils, emollient esters, butters, waxes, flavor oils, vitamin E, Jojoba gel or Versa gel or TKB gel base. They're all basically the same thing. Essentially just a lip gloss base. Laurel laurate, natural wax jelly, Lee peptide, Volip. I hope I pronounced both of those right. Polyamide 3, stearic acid, glyceryl stearate, cetyl alcohol, betanol alcohol, cetyl alcohol, Redomols SCG, and linolin. This is not vegan, but this is a really, really popular ingredient that's probably in a lot of your guys' lip balms. It's not vegan though. So adding these more advanced ingredients can create some really unique textures for your lip scrubs. If you use things like jojoba gel, versa gel, or TKB gloss base, or any other type of lip gloss base, or even natural jelly wax, you'll create a more gel-like lip scrub. Natural wax jelly is also a great natural alternative to petroleum. Laurel Laurie is a skin penetrating agent. It increases slip and helps create a less greasy product. Lipeptide is an anti-aging agent containing tripeptide 1 and hyaluronic acid. It can help minimize lines around the lips and is said to increase lip volume by 30%. Folly Lip is a lip plumper and trust me, you can feel it working. If you use too much of it, it, it will make your lips very red and can irritate them. So keep that in mind. Polymy 3 creates clear solid gel sticks. So it could be used to help increase viscosity while not changing the color of your product. Here's a lip gloss that I made primarily um, with Polyamide 3. It looks really freaking cool. I made this on my uh, Patreon. So if you wanna learn how to make this, then go check out my Patreon. Stearic acid, glycerol stearate, cetyl alcohol, behanol alcohol, cetyl alcohol, Redomols SCG. These are all hardeners. Well, technically Redomols SCG is an emulsifier, but since there's no emulsifying going on in this product, it'll just work as a thickener. Um, these are all also emollient, so they help moisturize without feeling greasy. And then linolin, which like I said, isn't vegan. This is commonly used in lip balms and I see it in lip masks a lot as well. It's a moisturizing agent that helps create a protective barrier on the lips to reduce trans epidermal water loss. It has a long lasting moisturizing effect when compared to other oils. So that's why it's so commonly used in lip balms and lip masks. And then Cerebellina, to put it simple, it's like a fancier version of beeswax. It creates more like gelling rather than uh, like hardening waxiness like most waxes do. It provides a more smooth and luxurious texture. So let's try making some advanced lip scrubs. This first one is an advanced semi-solid gel lip scrub. So here's the formula, and I'm gonna be making a 50 gram batch. So here it is transferred into a 50 gram batch recipe. And let's go ahead and make it. So I'm starting out with the heated phase again, and I'm gonna begin with the polyamide three. And polyamide three is a really tricky ingredient to melt. Um, it's just really stubborn, so you wanna get it like really hot as much as you can, and just mix the mixture as much as you can to get it to dissolve. I promise, just let it sit there, mix it long enough, let it get hot enough, and it'll eventually all dissolve. Then I added in the natural wax jelly, and then my sunflower oil, 
Just mix that up a little bit before I placed it in the water bath and let all of that melt. Now I'm gonna weigh out my sugar, add in a little bit of orange mica powder to get a pretty peach shade, because I am gonna be flavoring this with peach flavor oil. And here's how the heated phase looks once it's melted. It's still pretty thick and it does re-solidify pretty quickly. So now that it's cooled, I'm gonna add in the vitamin E and the peach flavor oil, mix that all in, and then go ahead and pour in my sugar, mix that up, and there you go. I do notice that this lip scrub has the best spreadability on my lips. I think it's just because it's like pretty liquidy compared to the other lip scrubs that I've made. I don't know, it just glides on the lips the easiest and doesn't fall off the lips like some lip scrubs do. Now this is an advanced lip plumping lip scrub. I do wanna mention that Volley Lip is irritating to the lips. It made like my entire mouth red the first time I used it because I used it at too high of a percentage. So do be careful if you're using this in a lip scrub since you're scrubbing your lips as well. Mixed with the lip plumper it may cause some irritation. Use with caution. And start with a smaller percentage of Volley Lip make sure you're okay with using it and slowly work your way up. That's what I had to do. But here's the formulation, and then I'm gonna make a 50 gram batch, and here it is transferred into a 50 gram batch recipe. So let's go ahead and make it. Again, starting with the heated phase, I'm adding in the subtle alcohol and the sunflower oil and melting that down, and I'm weighing out my sugar, adding in some red mica powder, mixing that in, and then once the heated phase is cooled down, I'm gonna add in the vitamin E, the flavor oil and the volip. Go ahead and mix all that together. And I, I, I know I call it volley lip and volip in this video. I apologize, whatever. Anyways, moving on, add in the sugar, mix that up. There you go, bam, lip plumping lip scrub. Now lastly, this is my advanced anti-aging watermelon lip scrub. The anti-aging ingredient in this product is the lip peptide. It's got tripeptide one, it's got hyaluronic acid. I added Laura Laurate to act as a penetrating agent and then I decided to use some watermelon oil since that has some anti-aging benefits. Same with apricot kernel oil. But yeah, so here's the formulation and I'm gonna make a 50 gram batch. Here's what the recipe looks like. So let's go ahead and make it. Again, no surprise, starting with the heated phase, adding in beeswax, the Laura Laurate, the watermelon oil, the apricot kernel oil, melting that down, weighing out the sugar, adding in the pink mica powder, mixing that up. Once the heated phase has re-solidified, add in the vitamin E, add in the flavor oil, add in the lee peptide, mix that all up. Then pour in your sugar, mix that in, and there you go. This one actually ended up being the second hardest, the hardest being the cocoa butter one, but again, that'll change depending on the temperature. Hopefully now you understand the basics of making a lip scrub and hopefully you're now able to come up with some of your own unique formulas. Let me know if you have any further questions down in the comments. Also, don't forget I have a blog that goes right along with this video over on Patreon. I'll link to my Patreon down below. It's only $5 a month and you get two exclusive videos every month because I'm super busy now and I don't really get to post as much as I would like on YouTube anymore. But You'll always get two guaranteed videos from me over on, over on Patreon every month. So I'll do my best to keep posting as much as I can on YouTube though, because I really, really love YouTube and um, I'm sad that I can't post as much as I would like. You can download this blog over on Patreon, print it out, and then you can have the information, the recipes, and the directions at your fingertips. So that's always really fun. But yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you in my next video. Also go follow me on Instagram because I love connecting with you guys over there. All right, talk to you later. I'm stuck in the motions I've been consumed by the